Balancing the Booksell Ten. My name is Balancing the Booksell Ten. There's a million books I haven't read. Just you wait. Bring me a wine! I'm alone in the house. I should just probably get that myself. Happy Friday and welcome back to Drinking by My Shelf. My name is Emma and today I am playing my least fucking favourite game, Balancing the Books. Holy balls, that is bad wine. It did cost like three pounds, so I probably should have guessed. Okay, how does this game work again? I just have to give away all of my books because I always fail. Cool, 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 cool. I remember this. Why do you do this, Emma? Why, why, why? Just kidding. I know this game is actually useful. Okay, let's start by looking at all of the books that I got from publishers in the month of April. Am I late to be doing this? What day is it now in May? Okay, I got this book called Vox which is by Christina Dolce and looks really interesting. So it's about basically where the government has placed a limit on the number of words that women are allowed to say. They're only allowed to say 100 words every day. So it's all about women being silenced. It's just like the real world. Yay. Then I got a digital galley called The Liar's Room, which I'm not going to lie, sounds pretty like the generic type of thriller that I just keep buying and keep not being that excited by. It's about a woman who has like left a secret life behind. Of course, you guys know the drill, that's how thrillers work. And then one day this man walks into her office and I feel like he knows some secrets from her life in the past and he starts describing this girl and she realizes it's her daughter and that he wants to hurt her daughter. I mean, drama, drama, drama. It's probably terrible. Let's see if this wine is as bad as I remember. Oh, it's worse. Oh, actually, if you pretend it's Ribena, then it tastes good. And then the other digital galley that I got sounds really cute. It's called The Lost Letters of William Wolfe. And it's about this guy who's a letter detective. So he has to solve like letters that didn't make it where they were supposed to because of smudged dresses or the wrong postcode. And it might be like love letters or birthday cards didn't make it. And it just sounds like it's gonna be a really cute story. Oh, and one more, I got one more digital galley, which is Love Will Tear Us Apart by Holly Seddon. And I'm currently reading that one now and it's okay so far. It's a thriller about the like my best friend's wedding promise. These childhood friends promised that if they were single by the time they were a certain age and they would get married, so they did, and they've like built this life together but it's a slightly odd relationship and somehow that's gonna be a thriller? I don't know how yet, so far it just seems kind of like a relationship drama. Maybe that is what it is, maybe it's not a thriller, maybe I just assumed because she wrote a thriller in the past. I should pay more bloody attention to what I'm reading. I'm actually going to check that for you because I feel like that's important information you might want to know. <laughs> that's why you're on booktube to find things out. It's not a thriller. That explains so much about why it's not very thrilling. I'm going to re-evaluate this book. Maybe I'll enjoy it more now that I know it's just supposed to be about the relationship. That's so interesting. Emma, what is your problem? Then I also got, before I started at Pam Millen, they very kindly sent me two books, which I have read. I got The Upstairs Room by Kate Murray Brown, and I really, really liked this one. This is like a modern ghost story meets a relationship drama. It's got the thing that I love in supernatural books. I don't really care about reading about my ghosts and stuff, but I love when it's hints of supernatural that you can almost totally rationalize away. So you can almost be like, obviously it's just a metaphor for this or blah, 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 blah. But then there's little kind of hints where you're like, is there actually a ghost? You know what I mean? I really like that. So this is about this family that move into this house and it's a very creepy, weird kind of house. There's like writing on the walls from the previous owners who left in some mysterious circumstances. And while they're there, the family ties start to crumble. And they also have a lodger and she has her own kind of effect on the house and impact from the house. And I just thought it was really beautifully done. I really liked reading about all of these characters and it was eerie. There were bits where I was actually properly scared because, especially at the beginning, it felt really supernatural. But as it went on, it felt just really moving. Really interesting book. I would really recommend. And then the other book that they sent me was The Seven Imperfect Rules of Elvira Carr by Frances Maynard. And this one I really, really enjoyed. It's really sweet. So it's about the main character called Elvira, who's just described as neuroatypical. But the author, Frances Maynard, works with autistic adults. So I think that's where she got a lot of the inspiration for the character. And it was a really sweet story, and I liked the main character, but it was quite obvious to me that it wasn't own voices, because it felt very much like it was aimed at neurotypical people and it had these kind of like knowing winks almost throughout that it's narrated by Elvira but it's very obviously 
narrated to people who are neurotypical and like learning about autism which is fine so it depends what you're looking for as a reader but I personally would prefer to read an own voices book and then since I started working at Pamela Millen I have had a lot of books to read um, but the two that I got in April to take home were Dead Girls by Abigail Tartellin and I will link below to the interview that I did over on Book Break with Abigail Tartellin, the author of this, because it was really fun, I really enjoyed doing it. This book is really great, I really really liked it. It's about a young girl called Thera whose best friend Billy goes missing. They're 11 years old. Her best friend goes missing and she goes out to find her and she finds that she's dead and that she's been murdered and it's pretty grisly what's happened to her. She's been sexually assaulted and it's pretty horrible. So Thera is really angry and she decides to go and enact revenge on Billy's killer. And I talked a lot about this in the interview, so you can just go over there, I won't repeat myself too much, but I found that a lot of feminist books I read are about kind of showing you the problems in society and they often make me feel really sad and helpless when I read them. Whereas this one, even though it's very sad and moving and horrible things happen, it did make me feel more empowered. And I think that's the right direction that we want to be going in, is teaching girls that they don't have to see themselves as just potential victims who are fragile and breakable by the world, we can teach them how they can actually be strong. Obviously, preferably not go and enact like vigilante justice against murderers because that's not really the way we want the world to run, but Thera sticking out for herself and being this kind of powerful hero, enacting revenge, which is something that we've seen with male protagonists for so long and it's so rare for female protagonists, it's just a really refreshing change. And then the other one was The Other Woman by Sandy Jones, which is a great beach read, I would say. It's not really for me, I don't think I'm the right audience for this. It's about a mother-in-law who is trying to get between a woman and her fiancé. I do think this one's going to be really popular. If you're looking for something that's tense in that kind of silly way, and I don't mean that to sound so negative because sometimes that is what I want in a book, I want it to just be a bit silly and fun, then it's that. I know I just talked about having read this one, but I only just read it in May, not in April. So it's still a point on my TBR if I'm being strict about counting up my April balancing the books. And then finally, the books that I bought, or the book singular that I bought, because I only bought one because I'm so good these days, I bought The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. And this is the book that we are reading in the Tenterhooks book club, which I'll also link to below. That's a book club that I am running with Angelica Kofa, who's another booktuber who I absolutely adore, so I will link to her channel below. We are running an in real life book club for anyone who can make it to London every few months. We're going to actually meet up in person and talk about these books. The next one is on the 28th of May. So do come along if you would like to talk about The Haunting of Hill House with us on that day. So I've got this one, haven't read it yet. Need to do that soon. Let's see how many other books I read that I haven't already mentioned. Ribena. Ooh, some good ones. So in April, I read Whistle in the Dark by Emma Healy. She wrote Elizabeth is Missing, which I really loved when I read that a few years ago. Whistle in the Dark is about a family and the daughter goes missing for about four days and where the novel starts she's just come back and she's alive and she's okay and it's a huge relief but she has no memory of where she's been for the last four days. And it's just this kind of slow and gentle book of this mother and daughter relationship and the mother trying to understand what happens to the daughter and what she's not telling her and also to unpick their relationship that led up to that point and it's written in a really beautiful way. It's a little bit experimental, the different chapters are told in slightly different ways. I thought the ending was really beautiful. Just really, really liked it. I think Emma Healy is going to be one of my new favourite authors because I've loved both of hers so far. And then a really interesting book that I read was The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh. It's about this island these three sisters that live on this island with their mother and we don't quite know what's happening in the outside world other than that it's implied that women are in danger from the world and in danger from men like physically like that being around men would physically destroy their bodies but these three men arrive near the beginning they arrive onto the island two grown men and a child and the mother tries to protect the sisters from the men says that they will hurt them but the more time the sisters start to spend with these men the more they start to question what's really going on because their bodies aren't reacting this way. They think, I'm describing this so badly. It's just a very mysterious book. It was described as like a feminist dystopia, but it's more complicated than that because we're never really introduced to any kind of dystopian world. So you're never quite sure if the mother's warnings are just a metaphor for the world as we know it, where women often are in danger from men, 
or if there is actually some change to the world and that this is a dystopian future. Who knows? Really strange book, really interesting. I feel like it's one that I will read again at some point. And I recommend that you look up someone else talking about it because that was terrible. You would not believe that I talk about books on the internet for a living, would you? Apparently I'm so bad at it right now. Maybe it's the terrible wine. Then another book that I read was For Today I Am A Boy by Kim Fu, and I read this one with Emma Tobias, and we will be doing a video together about it because she's coming to London. So excited. I will link to her channel below as well. She is another of my favourite booktubers. And For Today I Am A Boy is about the life of a trans woman, right from her childhood to her growing up. I'm not quite sure what age she is at the end but we see a long span of her life. And she's raised by immigrant Chinese parents, and the father is very obsessed with Western masculinity. He sees Westernness and masculinity as being entwined in some way, which really, really impacts on the way that our main character is raised and is treated by her father. And it's very sad. I found it really moving and sad and really well written. And it was wonderful to see so much of our main character's life up until she's living through a time when more people are being open and coming out as trans and she finds that really hard because she's had to suffer in silence for so long and keep it hidden for so long that she actually kind of resents these people who are out. I thought that was a really interesting part of the book. Again, this is not an Own Voices novel so I will be looking for more Own Voices books on this topic to read but I did think this was really beautiful. And then finally I read Our Kind of Cruelty by Araminda Hall, which I also really liked. This one was so dark. It's told from the perspective of this man whose ex-girlfriend, <laughs> I forgot the word girlfriend, whose ex-girlfriend has moved on and is getting married. But he knows in his head that this is part of this game that they used to play where they would deliberately, she would deliberately make him jealous. And the whole thing is told from his perspective. So we only see his conviction that that's what's happening. But as the reader, you know that that's not true. And it becomes really deeply disturbing seeing it play out from his perspective. But it was also really clever and multi-layered because while he is a pretty creepy person to be trapped inside their head, we also see some of his backstory and his life growing up and you really feel for him, which is a tricky area in these kind of stories. I know it is. I know it's not always obvious whether or not we should be writing stories to justify violent men and justify them as delusional and hurt because that's often how the media wants to paint them and they do that at the expense of the women. Hey, future editing Emma just cutting in here because I didn't actually mention in my original talking about this that the book does make that clear. The book is largely about how men are justified at the expense of women and how women are treated in stories like this. So it is a really feminist book and I didn't really make that clear in my description. I can't really talk about it much more without giving away the plot, but I thought it was really interesting and very uncomfortable reading, which I always like. And then the final one is I was reading Beneath the Surface, which is the book about the Blackfish documentary. And is really good and interesting so far, but I did DNF it, so that's another one off my list, just because I've already seen the documentary several times and I didn't feel like the book really added much beyond it. Either the stuff that I was interested in was already in the documentary, or it was extra stuff that I didn't really feel like I needed to know. So if you haven't read the documentary, read the book, or if you just like love reading non-fiction and you don't mind that you've slightly read it already, then read the book but I read enough of it to be like, cool, yeah, interesting story on their shelf now. I can always pick it back up in the future if I like really need some whale facts. So that's it, which means that once again, I am in the shit and I have to give away six books. Me, me, future Emma again. Past Emma didn't mention the whole point of this game, which is that I like to end every month with five fewer books on my TBR than I started with. So hence, six. Okay, cool, bye. Six books is bloody loads. I don't want to do it. I know that'll make me happy and that like every time so far, once I've given the books away, I never even notice. I forget that I ever had them. So I know it's the right thing to do, but it just always seems so hard and six is so many. Okay, six books. We can do this. Okay, you know what? I know what I'm going to do for the first one. I have read two thirds of A History of Britain in 21 Women now by Jenny Murray and I feel like I've now read enough. There are some really great stories in here and I'm really glad that I read those stories, but I'm just struggling too much with the fact that there's 21 women in here and I think one woman of colour. And also a lot of the women here were privileged for other reasons, like socio-economically privileged. That was a long word, Emma. So I'm just not sure 
how much this is kind of adding to the world of how we think about women because the women mentioned in here are already the ones that we do respect and actually to me a more important role of feminism would be to widen that definition of the type of woman that we can respect also the fact i keep looking at it the fact that it's got the daily mail have blurbed it like you're writing a book about feminism and women and you let the daily mail blurb it so i just feel like there's too many things about this book that i'm like unconvinced by. Which is a shame because it was a Christmas present and I'm really grateful for it and it's even signed by the author and that's a really lovely present and I will be keeping this one and I will pull it down sometimes to look at these women because they're really useful histories but I just don't feel that reading it all in one go like this as a book is particularly expanding and inspiring my definition of great women of history. Okay next, I hate to do this because I've held on to this book for so long now but Hitman Anders and the Meaning of It All. I love Jonas Jonasson. The Hundred Year Old Man Who Climbed Out the Window and Disappeared is one of the best books ever. Loved it so much. The, what's the other one called? The Girl Who Saved the King of Sweden was also really fun. Really enjoyed that one. This one I haven't yet read, but I've only heard bad reviews, which is such a shame because the last two were so funny. My husband tried to read this one and my sister tried to read this one. Neither of them got very far with it and all of the booktubers that I've seen who've picked it up just said that it wasn't anywhere as good as the others and I think they gave up on it too. So I'm going to take that one off my TBR. A book that I've had for a while and I keep thinking I want to read but just not picking it up so I might as well just strike it off the list is Before the Fall by Noah Hawley? Possibly that's his name? And it sounds really exciting and dramatic. It's about a plane crash and like the mystery of what caused the plane crash and also how they survive after the plane crash and I've heard really great things about it but it now just keeps getting pushed to the bottom of my priority list and I just feel like I'm probably never going to pick it up. Okay, the next one, I don't think this is cheating, I think it's actually just kind of funny that it was even on my TBR. I have this book, The Indisputable Existence of Santa Claus, and I don't really know why it's on my TBR because even though I haven't read it, I feel like this doesn't really count as like a TBR book, it's more like a sort of fun coffee table book to have around the house at Christmas time and flick through. So I'm not going to get rid of it, and I hope that you guys don't think that that's cheating, but I'm just going to take it off my TBR shelf because I just don't feel like that's where it's supposed to be. I'm just going to put it onto my normal bookshelf. I've got a little selection of other Christmassy books, and I think it should just live with them as like a fun book that I own, but that isn't like adding to my list of things I have to read. Cool, cool, cool. Comment below if you think I'm a cheater, but I don't really care. Okay, and then the last two... Okay, and I finally got the last two. Oh, it's such a nice looking book. This feels sad, but I'm gonna get rid of Hannah Witten's doing it because I think, oh, it looks cool from the side. I think this is probably a really, really cool book, but I don't think that I'm the audience for it. I don't think that's who she wrote it for. So I bought it just because I thought it was really exciting and I wanted to look at it and see what she's written about. And I think it's so great that books like this exist and I'm really glad that the audience it's for have this available to them, that's fantastic. But I don't know what I would really get from it. That's presumptuous because I haven't read it. Maybe it would change my world. But I think that it's aimed at teenage girls or teenagers of any gender. So I like the thought that if I give this one to my local Oxfam, then a teenager who needs it might see it and pick it up. And then finally, I'm gonna give away Acts of Love by Tallulah Riley. Such a pretty book, love this. And Tallulah Riley is an actress who I've seen in things like St Trinian's, so I thought that was really fun. But I've only heard bad things about it, unfortunately. I've heard that it's just not great writing and a bit silly. So, beautiful as it is, I probably wouldn't like this book. So that one can go. I thought that giving away six books was going to be impossible. That's what's so funny about this game, is that every time I sit down to do it, I'm like, why am I doing this, Emma, this is so stupid, you want to read all of those books. But then every time I actually go over and look, deeply like I have to get rid of six books which shall they be I suddenly find that it's actually quite easy and that there is a range of books there that I just no longer want to read maybe they were really exciting at the time that I got them and now my reading tastes have moved on or whatever and that's fine and when I reach the stage where I do genuinely want to read every book on that shelf I'll just stop playing the game so there's no pressure it's just really funny seeing how many books I always can actually find every month to get rid of but also giving away books to Oxfam is fun it makes me feel like a useful 
person sewing books into the world. So that brings me down to just 57 books on my TBR. I had 77 at the start of the year. So leave me a comment letting me know which books you are unhauling this month. And of course, give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for new videos every Friday. See you next time.